introduce you to my guest today, who is April Farmer. Oh my goodness. Babby Mason recommended her, and she says that she is a singer, a songwriter, and a worship leader extraordinaire. So we cannot wait to have a conversation with April Farmer. I've had a few conversations with her, and I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a powerful meeting because we have had so many roadblocks. The enemy has tried to stop this, but today we get going. So as we get started, um, April, it is so good to have you here. Would you tell everybody where you're coming to us from? Well, Tammy, I'm excited to be here. You are absolutely right. It seems like everything wanted to stop this from happening, but God is faithful and I am I'm elated to be here. I am actually um, um, on here from Atlanta, Georgia. That is where I reside. I live outside of Atlanta, Georgia. So um, I'm excited to be here, excited to talk about our awesome, wonderful savior and God and what he's done in my life and what he's doing in so many other people's lives. And I'm just, I'm so encouraged that Babby thought of me uh, to share me with you. She's an awesome woman and I could not be more blessed to have her in my life as a friend, as a mentor and as a sister. So just thank you so much for having me today. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to be able to talk to you. I wanna first, as we get started, I am drinking, I drink from several different coffee cups because one of the things that I say is Texas raised, Jesus saved, loving all things cheetah. But <laughs> this old coffee cup is from the 1940s. And what I have found is that scripture is kind of like that old coffee cup. It was still helping people in the 1940s. It was still the answer mm for every single question, for every single problem that the world threw at us, whether it was the person drinking from that coffee cup, that's called Jadeite, by the way, mm. whether it was somebody drinking from that coffee cup so many years ago, or it's somebody drinking from their coffee cup this morning, mm -hmm. who just has some answers to what they're going through. And you know, life has thrown us a whirlwind in the last two years, and it seems like we have taken uh we've detoured straight into it again i don't like that nobody likes that but god's word prepares us for such a time as this absolutely so i want you to tell us today april give give me a little bit about how god's word has encouraged you it has been there it is relevant today as it was many years ago yeah absolutely yeah i i remember um, just learning God's word as a child. My parents were those parents that made you learn memory verses and scripture memory all the time from a little bitty girl. So I just remember all those things and we learned lots of songs that were attached to scripture. So um, all, all kinds of things. So the word kind of got in me at an early age. My parents were really firm about listening to songs and music that was based on scripture. And so we learned a lot of it that way. And so down through the years, even through my highs and through my lows, the word has been something that I was taught and learned to recognize as um, something that could be my anchor. It could be, it's steady, it's constant, and it's true. And that belief in me, even as a young child, that the word of God is true, um, really uh, became a light. The Bible tells us in, in, in Psalms that thy word, O Lord, David said, is a lamp into my feet and it's a light into my path. And it's so amazing to me how when you veer off of the word, how you start to walk in darkness. Does that make sense? Like, it's like the more you veer off of the word and, and, and not allowing this lamp to light your path, you begin to walk in darkness. And so the answer to that, when you find yourself in those dark places is to go back to where the light is and the light is the word and the word is God. Um, so it's just been a constant in my life. And I remember even as um, I had challenges in life, um, those the word was the thing that brought me back. The word was the, the word that says that, you know, there is um, a, a no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So when I experienced becoming a mom, 
at an early age as a teenager and I felt so much shame and I felt so much disgrace and dishonor, I remember that the word of God says that there is therefore now no condemnation for those yes. who are in Christ Jesus. I remember the word that says that if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you of all of your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And so those were the things that helped me remember that I don't have to sit in this valley of despair, that I don't have to sit in the, in the sadness and the brokenness that sin does and the separation that sin brings, but that if I confess that sin, if I lay my sin before God and I own it and I, I share it with him and I ask for forgiveness, that he would forgive me. And there were no conditions to that. Only thing he said is to confess it. And, and so those things just kind of stayed with me down through the years. And it was things that I was able to share and pass on to my own children. Um, even as a single mom with, 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 with two boys, you know, I remember moving into my first apartment. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was buying my first apartment. I just moved up here to Atlanta and um, into a new city after college. And I moved my boys up here and my uncle came with me to see my first apartment. And it was a basement apartment. And you know, those apartments where you kind of go oh. downstairs and all there is, is a brick wall down there in your door. And yes. my uncle, he, he arrived. I had already gotten the apartment. He was like, why would you get this apartment? Somebody could be hiding down here and, and can attack you at night. And I was like, and it was, but it was the first time I had ever thought to be afraid. But then I remembered the word of God that my mom and dad had taught me since I was a little girl that says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, fear. but of yes. power and of love and of a sound mind. And so I was like, wait a minute. If God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, I'm not going to let what your I'm not going to let your fear make me afraid. Oh, and I prayed and I said, "Well, angels, I need y'all to be set at my door <laughs> and just protect and guide me." And so it's been something that I was able to teach my kids as they were afraid to sleep at night in the dark and just teaching them those things. And so it's really been a constant and an anchor in my life. You know, you're right. It is an anchor, and I know this this old worn out Bible. Uh, <laughs> It's been duct taped and everything else, but you know what? I've slept with it. Mm -hmm. I've held it close to me at times whenever I needed it because God's word is better than any book that I've ever read. Mm -hmm. And when he tells us in Isaiah, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Mm -hmm. What he doesn't say is that the, the weapon, weapon will form. That's right. <laughs> and let me tell you, the weapons definitely form. Yes, however, however, you know, God didn't blink or mess up or anything like that. We were created for such a time as this. Yeah. Yeah. He knew that we would be able to walk through what we're going through right now in this. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, I, I hear people a lot of times saying, oh, back in the good old days, I wish I was born way back then. Or people sometimes I call them uh, drop hatch Christians sometimes. And what I mean by that is they, they always will say, Jesus, just come back today. Come back today. I just can't handle this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And the Bible tells us nobody knows when the Lord's coming back. Mm -hmm. However, I will say that what he wants us to do is not start screaming at people and telling them um, that what are you going to do right now? That never brings anybody to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I don't recall ever hearing anyone and reading anyone in scripture saying that it was ever done that way. Right. We created for such a time as this. So we're not supposed to be crazy. We mm -hmm. are supposed to show that peace that surpasses all understanding. Absolutely. Now, now Absolutely. we're peculiar people. You know, God's <laughs> word tells us that. <laughs> Absolutely. But before we were even formed in our mother's wombs, he knew us and he knew who our mother was and he knew who our what what time period our mother was going to be in. Yeah. He strategically set us in the time frame in which we were born. And I have to remind myself of that too, because I've had that thought sometimes like, well, what if what would life have been like had I been born here? And what it would life have been like, you know, at this particular point? Or why do my children have to now walk through life in this particular day and age? And God has to constantly remind me, I have the world in my hands. There is yeah. nothing that happens. There is no person that exists. There is no breath that is ever breathed that I didn't orchestrate. So I know what I'm doing. Simply right. trust me, 
Trust that I know what time period you needed to be born in. Trust that I know what parents you needed to have, whether they were great parents or whether they were awful parents. Trust that I know and I have a plan and that if you would submit to my plan, if you would trust me and allow me to direct your path, I have a story that I'm writing that is so much bigger than the 50 years that you see or the 100 years that you see or the legacy that you have the history of. It's so much bigger than that. And, and, and when I remember that, when I grab hold to that, it gives me strength and it encourages me because we get to be a part of God's grander story. This story, the continuation of what was already started that we get to have. And even when we think about that, we think about God in his infinite wisdom, new enough to inspire people at that moment in time to write down what was happening. Why? So that you and I could be on this right now and be able to read it, to be encouraged by it. One scripture that I love is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, and it says, all scripture is breathed out of God, out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Every, not some every good work. And when you look at that list, every time I read that, it's profitable for teaching. So there's nothing that I, there's no information that I can gain that the word can't help me as far as growing in my education, in my understanding, for teaching, for reproof, for correction. So it helps to guide me. It helps to point me in the right direction when I'm going in the wrong direction. And for training in righteousness, for showing me, for educating me, for disciplining me on how to live in right standing with the creator of the universe so that we can be complete. You know, he wants to complete us. He is perfecting us. And that perfection, that perfecting happens as we learn and cultivate our lives through the inspired word of God. That's exactly right. And mm -hmm. in the times that we live in, you know, Jeremiah 33, 3 says, come to me and I will tell you things you did not yes. know. Yes. And so in this world we're living in, there's a lot of things that we do not know. Mm -hmm. And James, he tells us, April, and you know this too, if you want wisdom, ask for ask it. For it. Ah. He makes it so simple, Tammy. It's not complicated. It's not confusing. He says, simply ask. And I think in that asking, to, to ask God for wisdom means that I have to acknowledge that he holds all wisdom and I don't. So it's a humbling of myself to ask. I have to humble myself to ask somebody for help with the situation. So in order for me to ask God for wisdom, I have to first acknowledge that it's something I don't possess. So that has to, that, that's a humbling part um, that, that was required on my end. And when I humble myself and say, God, I don't understand this, but I know that you do. Would you give me wisdom? Would you give me insight? Would you lead me and guide me? And understanding that God may not pour out the full picture. Mm -hmm. He may want to illuminate. And I say this sometimes when I pray, I'm like, I think of, I love musicals and I think of um, the Wizard of Oz and how Dorothy was told to get to, um, to get to Oz, she was told to follow the yellow brick road. That was the journey. So don't go off the path. Just follow the yellow brick road. And sometimes when I pray, I literally say, God, illuminate my yellow brick road. Make it so clear to me. I mean, just light it up. And even when you see um, the Wiz, which is another version of the Wizard of Oz, and that version, it literally lights up. It's like when you take a step, the next step lights up. And I see the word of God that way. As I submit my ways to God, he illuminates the next step. Okay, this is the next step. And even he tells us in his word not to be uh, concerned about tomorrow or down, down the years. We're not even supposed to presume upon tomorrow. We're not supposed to say next year, I'm going to do blah, 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 blah. We're supposed to say, if the Lord allows, you know, if the Lord, you know, so all those things. And so just illuminating his word, illuminating his wisdom and giving us that simply by asking. And when I ask, I take a step in faith based on what he shares. And then I take the next step as every step is illuminated. I love how he does that. I love how you, when you talk about God's word, you're illuminating. You just glow, girl. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I know as a woman who 
I had several mini strokes that mm-hmm. led to what was a heart condition. And now I have, uh, it was an area in my heart where I have a PFO closure. And so they, they fixed it by the grace of God. And, mm-hmm. you know, God's hand is on everything. And so therefore mm-hmm. I give him praise and the glory. But mm-hmm. you also have something in common there. Tell them a little bit about what has happened to you and mm-hmm. how God got you through. Yeah. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, I became a mom very early. I was a mom at 17 and 19. So I had two boys and it was really just the two of us. And I I thought God was going to bless me with a husband during that time to kind of help me with that. But he chose to withhold a husband. So I raised my children by myself for 23 years. And so when God did introduce me to my husband, I was already approaching um, about to be 40. And I was in this place though, where I was so good. I had like, Lord, you know what? You got me through that. I'm good. Like, it's just me and you, we're going to do this thing. And so, but God blessed me with a husband and I met him and God made it super clear that this was the one for me. And so we got married, um, back in 2018 in May and six months later, I went in for a routine surgery And um, a few days after my surgery, I was sent home actually on Thanksgiving day. And the day after that, I had a stroke. And so this is six months into marriage. I had a stroke. I felt like I was on top of the world. I'm a newlywed, just everything's going right. But then the day after Thanksgiving, I've celebrated with my family. I had a double brain bleed. So I had a hemorrhage here and here in my brain. And I was in the hospital for months. And it was one of those things where I had just started walking in this new season of my life with my husband, this new season of this next step in my calling. You know, I've been a worship leader for so long and God has been stirring this gift and this this passion and fire for his word and sharing his word. And so I was opening myself and being obedient to speaking and sharing God's word, not just in music, but in word and in the spoken word. And so I was just in this such a great place. And then I had this stroke where my brain's not working properly. My kids are walking in and I don't recognize them. They ask me to read and I can barely read. And I'm struggling with this pain. And in that moment, all I knew to hold on to in this crazy chaotic situation, what I knew to be true was God's word. Mm. What I knew to be true was God's word. And my husband, and I love him so much. Um, what my husband did, and we even have video footage of this, um, but he would play this song by Brooklyn Tabernacle and it's Psalm 34. And some of my favorite songs are just straight scripture songs. Yes. yes and yes. Psalm 34 says this. And so this is what he's playing in my ear while I'm in the hospital for over a month. Every day we are in the hospital room worshiping and play, praising God and, and listening to this song that says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And then the, in verse four, it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me yes. and delivered me from all of my fears. So as I'm sitting in that hospital room and I'm afraid and I don't know what's going on, I don't know how well my speech will come back. I don't know how, what the future holds. I sought him and he delivered me from all of my fears. And those who look upon him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. And then you go down to verse eight and it says, oh, taste and see. See? He that is. the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And so as I'm listening to that song, I'm remembering all of those the songs that were in my heart from down through the years. You know, uh, you are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong, not in my own strength, but in the strength of of the Lord. And so what I could still do was sing. And we sang every scripture song I knew in that room. And God carried me through that. And I remember feeling the transform, the transformative healing power of God. And the thing is this, is it, it doesn't matter to me whether he healed um, in a way that is unknown 
or whether he healed through the medication that was given to me that made that brain start acting. I don't care however you want to bless me, however you want to heal me, Lord. But he brought healing and he brought restoration. And it was his word that carried me through that. It was his word that gave me strength when I didn't know about tomorrow. And so his word has just, um, has proven itself to be the resource of life. Not even just one of, but it's the, it's a, the primary resource of life. Anything else that anybody could ever create or structure comes from this first. It all came from him anyway. And so I find so much strength and so much value in that. And he brought me through that season. And, and I was just um, uh, sharing with somebody earlier um, that I'd had a stroke. And he looked at me like, what? You had, I'm like, yes, I did. But this is how good God is. God gave me my life back. And when I realized that, when that revelation hit me that my life is in God's hands and he chose to allow my breath to extend another day and another day and another day. And I, at that particular point in life, it was just another just surrender and commitment to God. Like, Lord, I don't, I want to cut out all this extra stuff that may be going on in my life. You give me breath every day and you hold the number of days of my life in your hand. What do you want me to do? I don't want to do anything besides what it is that you call me to do. Because if you call me home tomorrow, I want to be busy doing what you've called me doing to do today. And, and so that is, has just become just uh, what's what I would call, I guess, the, this catalyst in my life that has taken me to this whole other platform. And I will say whatever he wants me to say. I will sing whatever he wants me to sing. I will do whatever he wants me to do, knowing that his plan is way bigger than mine and that his word will lead me and guide me through every season of my life. And so um, I couldn't live without it. Just couldn't do it. But I'm going to tell you, just you talking about the power of the Lord is blessing my fuzzy socks off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, also a song, when you said Brooklyn Tab, oh, that's mm -hmm. all you had to say. Oh, I I actually visited there and it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And But also they have a song, My Life is in His Hands. Yes. And that song. Mm. Mm -hmm. So as we begin to close this, April, I, for those people who are watching, who they don't feel like their life is in his hands because they're scared. They're so fearful. They don't know what tomorrow will bring mm -hmm. and they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so all they want to, all they want to do is just um, curl up in a ball in a fetal position and uh, just, just wait to be told because they are so fearful. Mm -hmm. What would you say? to the woman who's listening that has no peace that surpasses all understanding today. Absolutely. What I would say to you, my sister, is that God's word is true. And I know some of us um, have different experiences with God's word. Some of us, we are intimidated by it. We don't understand it. It's confusing. But what I do know is that God did not, I does not intend for his word to be something that makes us afraid or makes us feel like we can't come to him. So start simple and simply trust Proverbs three, five, and six. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean to your own understanding in all of your ways, in all of your ways, acknowledge him and allow him to direct your path. And when you know and trust that God loves you with a love that can never be measured, that can never be stripped away. God in his infinite wisdom and in his love will never lead you astray. So although those, those things in the world make you fearful, those things, God has not given us fear. So anything that's making you fearful is not from God. So just lean in. I want to encourage you to lean into him. And even if it's just one scripture you find that gives you hope and encouragement, cling to it, meditate on it day and night, and let that rejuvenate your spirit, soul, mind, and body. And another thing that I would encourage you to do is with that one scripture that you get, just start simple, find that one scripture. Don't just read it say it, mm. recite it out loud over and over and over and over again and allow, because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. Yes. 
hearing the word of God. So there's, it's one thing to read it, but there's a, there's a, there's a power in, in the way our brain receives what we hear. We hear so many things on television and on, our, our, on social media. We hear things and we respond to what we hear. But if we're hearing things that aren't true, we're gonna be uh, led by those things. But take that one scripture, that one truth and say it out loud and let yourself hear it and believe and cling to that and allow the spirit of God, allow the word of God to transform your life, to teach you, to reprove you, to correct you, to train you in righteousness and allow the love of the Lord to be an anchor for you, the word and the love of the Lord to be an anchor. And I promise you, he will not let you down. Just like I read in Psalm 34, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste, I love that verse. Just give him a try. Just taste it and you'll see. Mm, mm, mm. He is good. That, that he tastes good and he will not let you down. That's exactly right. Thank you so much, April. And I'm gonna throw something off the cuff here since you're this uh, worship leader extraordinaire. And oftentimes I say, um, worship, you wait. Whatever you're going through, worship while you wait. Because mm -hmm. who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm -hmm. They will soar on wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. So April, can you sing us mm -hmm. um, just something that the Lord puts on your mind? Maybe one, maybe one little, um, ah, the words escape me, stand and not, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Sing us a little bit, and then we're going to pray to um, to lead. But I'm going to tell you what. You have spoken his word mm. in such a way today that we could see that the joy of the Lord was your strength, and it's infectious. Mm. And I can't wait for people to hear that. Amen. This is a song that always ministers to me. Um, it's such an honest song, and it's a prayer that I sing, and it says, uh, Lord, I hate to take your time because you've heard it all before, but there are questions on my mind I can't find the answers for. In spite of how it may appear, you know that my heart is true and I find the truth I'm searching for in you because everything you is all I'll ever need. There is not a path I take where you cannot lead. How can I be less than what you ask of me when everything you are is all I'll ever Oh my goodness, that was absolutely beautiful. And girl, I hit you off the cuff with that. Mm. And God gave you a song that ministered to my heart. And I know it will everyone that's listening. Can they find that? Can they find you singing that on YouTube or anything like that? Yeah, if you look up April Christina on YouTube or April Christina Farmer, I have music out under April Christina on Apple Music, um, all of your uh, platforms. Uh, if you look up April Christina, um, that's my, my full name is April Christina Farmer. But if you look up April Christina on any platform, you'll hear music from me and you can YouTube, you'll find video clips of me singing or maybe even speaking somewhere. But yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. It has been a blessing just to visit with you, to listen to you, to hear how God has used you. And I'm going to pray uh, right now that he just blesses you beyond belief today. Amen. Thank you, my sister. Ah, oh, you're welcome. Our most gracious heavenly father, Lord, I have chill bumps because of the words that your daughter used today, not only to minister to my soul, but to minister to everyone who will hear this. Lord, we praise you. We love you. We don't know what in the world we would do without you, father. And in the days ahead, may we stop every morning and pray. This is the day the Lord has made. I will be glad in it. So Father, light our path. May we see that light so brightly shining, Lord, 
that we want to run down it. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you tell us over and over in your word, do not fear. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you that your word never returns void and that people many, 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 many years ago were standing on the solid rock mm -hmm. as we are today. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And I ask that you bless April Farmer in such a way today for blessing us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Amen.